In this video, we will see how to create, rename, and move Exchange 2016 database and log files to different location. We will see how to create a new database and specify a path, as well as we will see how to rename an existing database, rename database files, as well as changing the path of database and log files to different locations as it is recommended by Microsoft that database and log files should be on different volumes and let's get started we have a server here uh, ex1 and it's part of itsense.com domain. What we will do first, we will log into Exchange Admin Center. Okay. I'll write the URL here HTTPS ex1.itsense.com slash ecp and I will get the security warning and the reason for the security warning because this certificate has been self-signed by exchange server itself later on in some video I will show you how to replace the certificate and here we are at the Exchange Admin Center. Now log into this Exchange Admin Center as an administrator. Here we are. We are inside Exchange Admin Center. As you can see, by default, we have just one mailbox for administrator because this is the account I used to install Exchange Server. We have no distribution groups, no contacts, nothing. Under the Servers tab, we will be able to see our server, ex1, it has mailbox role, with client access, which is the part of mailbox now. Under databases, as you can see, we have one default database, which is a very ambiguous name. Mailbox database with some number, like 1764. Three five nine one three nine. If I try to edit, I can only edit or change the display name of this database. However, I cannot change the path. It's all grayed out. Another way to look at it that which databases are available on our servers, you go to the server properties. Okay, okay. Um, well, I need to select the right time zone here. Just bear with me for a second. Okay. And under server properties, we have option database and database availability groups, and we can also see all available databases over here. So we'll go back to the databases tab, or I would say databases option. Just to recall uh, from previous video, we have drive E for exchange databases. Here I create one folder called exchange DB and drive L for exchange logs. 
and I will have a folder called exchange logs. These are blank at the moment because the default database is still on C drive. Now we create a new database and new database there is no issue because you can specify a name and specify a path, whatever you like. I will call it executives DB. I will select the server. I have only one over here. The path. I will copy the path where I want this database file to be. By default, the name of database file is based on the name of the database, the display name of the database. As you can see in my case, it's executivesdb.edb. Now let me copy the log file path. So all set, I have all the options, whatever I want. It's always easy to create a new database. You can specify your appropriate locations, locations of your choice, name of your choice, the name, the file name will be of your choice, which usually reflects the name of the database. And that's the better practice. And it's working in the background and in a moment we should be able to see this new database. Well, up and mounted. Okay. You want me to restart the information store service? As you can see, executives DB is ready and mounted. Let me restart the information store service. So I'll go to here, services, Microsoft Exchange Information Store, and restart. Server is not in production at the moment, so no issue. And if I go to eDrive, Yeah, the exchange DB. I see this folder called executives DB. And inside this, I will see a database file executives db.edb. Here it is. Yeah. And as far as logs are concerned, I will go to L drive, exchange logs, executives DB, and all the logs are here. Checkpoint log. Um, Reserve logs, as well as the temporary calls, and all the necessary log files are here. As we know, the file sizes, log file sizes, one MB. Okay. What about this existing database, the default database, which was created by Exchange during setup? Can I rename this? Yes, I can change the display name uh, using GUI. So let me change it to Employees DB. This, but you see, the path is grayed out. I cannot change the path the database and I cannot change the name of a database file even though the display name will be employees DB but the file name still will be mailbox database and some number and we don't want that what we want we want the database file to reflect the name of the database and we want database file to be stored on E drive and log files for this database to be on L drive. 
And for this purpose, we need to use Microsoft Exchange Management Shell. Because using GUI, I cannot do that, or we cannot do that. We have to use Exchange Management Shell for that. So let's go to Exchange Management Shell. And I run it as an administrator. The commandlet I will use for this, it's called move database path. Oops, sorry, I'm just used to these shortcuts. Yeah, move database path, identity, and then we specify the name, a display name of the database. We, we just rename it, we just renamed to employees DB and the path of the database file where I want the database file to be and the path include the new name of the database file as you can see employees DB dot ETB and then the log file path that where I want log files to be stored in my case it's on L drive L and exchange logs and employees db subfolder this is where i want the log files for this so let's execute this okay yeah as we know okay it will be temporarily dismounted, which is expected because what it does, it just moves the database path. I mean, it does move the database files. Just remember that it requires a database to be temporarily dismounted. So make sure you have some downtime in case if your server is in production. And second thing, don't use it for the database, which are part of database availability group because that will cause some problem. In my case, right now, this database are not part of a DAG, so it's fine, as well as the server is not in production, so some downtime is also okay here. But make sure if you want to do it on production for a data database which stores some mailboxes, just plan ahead for it. And it's working, and yep, it's done. So let's go back here. We will refresh it. See, database is mounted. I'll go to the properties, and you can see it's all set to the new path. Nice, right? And here it is, the new file. File has been renamed, if you notice. And this is the log file. These are the log files. So this is what we wanted to achieve. What we did basically is rename the default database. Display name can be renamed using GUI, but in order to rename the database file itself, as well as in order to change the location of database and log file, we need to use a commandlet through Exchange Management Shell called Move Database Path. And that's what we did, and we succeeded.